Hello guys, welcome back over here. The day has come for me to film a video on leather. Leather fragrances and I'm a little bit under the weather so we're gonna get through this video with tons and tons of tea. So where do I begin? I have a big old pile of leather fragrances because it is one of my favorite notes. Notes slash accords. Leather is made up. You cannot extract leather. You cannot take sap from leather and turn it into an ingredient perfumery. It is something that you have to synthetically construct. As always, when I go through a new scent category with you guys, I like to touch upon the icons. These are fragrances that you just must know. You must have them in your arsenal up here when understanding leather fragrances today. The first one is Knije 10. This is from an Austrian brand released in 1924 or 25. This has been debated and co-created by the founder of modern perfumery, Francois Coty, one of the founders. That's a whole other tangent. But this is a fragrance that gives you leather. This is the modern construction of leather as we know it that has trickled down and created all of the leather fragrances that we now smell today. Kanije 10 punches you in the face with a first impression of sharp herbaliness and citruses and has this vintage, characteristically vintage-y uh, burst of carnation in it. A lot of vintage fragrances have carnation. We love this. It's a complex leather fragrance and I think it's under $100. It really is an affordable fragrance. You can just stop here. Just stop the video now <laughs> because this is the leather. But of course, we have varying tastes and our palettes differ, so we're going to dig into other leather fragrances. The next one I actually do have, it's a classic, a staple, an icon. She is the moment. This is Bandit by Robert Piguet. This fragrance gives you Audrey Hepburn in a leather jacket vibes. Um, leather is often perceived as a masculine note or a masculine accord. And this just begs otherwise because this was marketed towards women. I think it still is marketed towards women today. And it is just 1940s glory. It's... <sighs> this this one is just pistol sharp. This is like you're cleaning a pistol with it. Not that I own a gun or anything. But um, you're using some sort of grease to clean some sort of weapon. And you're about to put that weapon in your little strap and go kill a man. Because... Uh, yeah, this is just, it's one of those murder novel type of fragrances. The heroine in a murder novel who gets away with it would wear Bandit. The leather here is somewhat animalic with civet, although I wouldn't, you know, the formulation has changed. I have the modern version of Bandit and it still is, whoo, like whew, blow the smoke off your gun. Bandit is a weapon. Now fast forward to the 80s, 1986 specifically, and we have Bellamy by Hermès. This is when leather becomes more supple. So Knije Zane, uh, Piguet's Bandit were very punchy and pistol -y. And then now we're going through a more supple, worn-in leather. It's more of an actual worn-in leather jacket, which is the more modern, you know, now we're stepping closer to what we actually know when we smell a leather from Penhaligans, a leather from a new brand, and leather from some luxury brand. Tom Ford fragrances became extremely popular due to Tuscan leather, which also builds upon this similar accord. So I went to Dubai a couple years ago and I walked into the souks and I found the infamous Yusuf by Brother Yusuf uh, who makes fragrances and so I asked him to mix me something and <laughs> he just couldn't make anything that I actually liked. I was just like, er, er, er. Um, little did I actually understand that his forte is making clones. And if you know me, I'm a big no-no on clones. So I was like, okay, uh, he's like, do you like leather? I was like, yeah, sure. So he makes me a leather fragrance. And I was like, wow, this smells amazing. And um, it was just freshly mixed. So it didn't really occur to me until later that this was actually a clone of Tuscan leather. <laughs> Not to knock on Yusuf Bai, I love Yusuf Bai, if you're watching, we're still in touch, love you. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for clones in Dubai, go to Yusuf Bai. Wow, in this huge pile, I forgot to include Fetish by Roja. So this is basically building on the Bellamy Accord a lot. You can just get Bellamy. But Fetish is nice. I do have Fetish and I do enjoy it. And it, you know, it's, it's about the packaging and the naming and the quirkiness. And it's a whole experience. Fragrance is a whole experience. So don't let anyone take away from you how you perceive 
all of that. No one's gonna tell you what to do, okay? So now we're not actually following any chronological order. It ends here with the history and with the icons, but I just wanna talk about a modern leather fragrance that includes geranium. Um, so those were pure leathers. Now we're gonna include some other facets to it. So Rose Queer, one of my uh, current favorites by perfumer Jean-Claude Elena for Frédéric Mal. This uses that same sharp leather that I mentioned earlier, which is why it's a good segue uh, for this next part of the video. The sharp leather has been combined with the note of geranium, which is mm, interpreted as a masculine version of a rose. If you are uh, not crazy about rose, but you like to get into it, you try geranium and it'll kind of get your nose kind of ready for the rosiness. Uh, but I love all of it, you know, <laughs> as you know, I love all of it. Uh, and so yeah, it was queer, rose and leather, but it's actually geranium and a pistol sharp leather. And ah, oh, it's a love or hate fragrance. Folks, it really is a love or hate fragrance. Not everyone loves this when I spray it, but I love it. I, I just can't, I can't stop. In the vein of incorporating that Tuscan leather sharpness with another note or an accord, we have this one by Salvador Dali, which is uh, instead of take away the geranium, we have that sharp leather with geranium here, we're adding raspberry to this one, which is a really cool juxtaposition. This is actually very similar to Haute Couture by Givenchy. If you know that fragrance, then that's a budget version. Well, it came a lot before, so arguably this one was inspired by that fragrance. And you see this a lot in the fragrance industry where a huge price tag is put on something where the concept came a lot sooner and is available at a lot more affordable of a price. Anyways, I do like this one. Fabulous Mandawa. It smells really luxe. It smells really luxe and playful and fun. And what I like about this is that just, you know, contrast between you have the sweet raspberry and then with this sharp leather. So this could be one to look into if you normally like a fruity perfume and you'd like to get more into leather. Speaking of fruits and leather, this fragrance is one of my absolute favorites. It's by Serge Lutens, my favorite niche fragrance brand. It's called Dame Blanc. This has been a signature of mine for a long time. And this is where leather takes on a suede approach. So leather doesn't always have to be punchy. This is just an example of how leather can be soft, really, really soft. This is a whisper of a fragrance. It's a close one. It's a really great signature. And it's suede with this peach fuzz. You feel the fuzziness almost. It just, it's so light and pretty and elegant. And uh, yeah, just to show you that leather takes on very different variations. A leather is not just a face value thing. You can have so many iterations on leather. So this is another one to check out if you like shyer fragrances and, um, or maybe you're sensitive to really punchy strong scents try this one. This is my favorite suede. You might have heard of the House of Memo. I've done a whole video on all of their leathers. So you can check that out. I don't own any of their leathers because they're just not the top of top of the pop for me personally, you know, uh, but that's a personal thing. They have some great leathers. Do check out that video if you want to know more about Memo leathers. Okay, the next one, <laughs> I misplaced the bottle. So I'm showing you another one by Schwarzlusser, but the one I'm talking about is Lila 6, which I believe is kind of a wordplay as well, because it's leather and six, but six is pronounced as sex, so <laughs> leather sex. <laughs> um, and wow, wow, wow. This interpretation of leather is like no other. This leather is saffrony, it's vanillic, it's resinous, and then it's milky. It's got a milk accord. So you have your leather, supple leather though, not super sharp, with a milk accord. <laughs> and it's it's sexual. It really is sexual. I don't know what it is about it, uh, how milk can be sexy. I guess it is when it's combined with leather. Anything is sexy when it's combined with leather, but Lida 6, one to check out, and also very, very potent. Okay, the next leather I want to talk to you about is from a luxury brand called Bella Bellissima. It's actually in, <laughs> it has an Italian name, but it's actually a London brand. And I I'm not sure what the price was of this one. I think it's it's on the it is definitely on the higher end. It's available in Harrods and Selfridges and places like that. But they make really elegant fragrances. Some of them mm, aren't for me, but the ones that are are absolutely for me. So white leather is a more complex take on the leather accord, added with some fruitiness. 
a touch of oud, some rose in there, some jasmine. So you got some fruity floralness going on in here with some oud along with this leather accord. So it's called white leather. I wouldn't, it doesn't smell as pure as the name suggests. It's, it's more of a complex, strong dance with leather. I imagine a lot of you who like commercially classic tastes would enjoy this one, white leather. Very, very strong. This video is brought to you by Uliveri, who have kindly sponsored my wardrobe for the video. As you know, I love a robe, and this makes dressing up for filming a lot easier. Honestly, guys, I've tried to film this video for like three weeks, <laughs> and the time has come, and then <laughs> I'm all croaky. But love these. Look at the fringes on this one. I will say, though, that if you are taller than maybe five foot six, they do run a little bit short. I'm five eight and a half, five nine, and uh, yeah, my limbs aren't completely covered in them. It works, but I'm just saying, for those of you who are tall, 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 maybe wait for them to actually get sizes. These are one size, uh, they're very affordable. They have this wonderful part here that you can close, which I just, ugh, I love. I hate having a little malfunction when you're going to the door to pick up your parcel from the mailman, and then whoops, out goes your boob. So you can just tie this on the side and you can close it. And I've worn their other styles in previous videos, like this green one, which also has flowers on it. They each are really unique and really cute. For the winter, they also have this warmer collection. So it has some velvet on the sleeve. I mean, could you get more me with a robe? I think not. This just looks, yeah, just bougie and rich. And um, I love it. So if you're on the market for a robe to just lounge in, to spray your perfumes, to have some me time at home, or if you're looking to gift something for someone special in your life, do check out Uliveri. I will leave a link down below and with a potential code for you guys. I hope this brand resonates with you as much as it does with me. Speaking about the high end uh, fragrances, right? Here's a good example of how the Accord has been used again. This is C by Clive Christian, broken and put together. And yeah, I still have these. Uh, this is super pistol sharp. It actually would be a good comparison to Bandit in some ways. And it's also uh, Fougère-esque. It's kind of herbally. And as some people would say, very masculine. So uh, yeah, C by Clive Christian. But go to the beginning of this video if you want options that are not going to break the bank. The next fragrance that we have is a super interesting take on leather in a mm, mashup with incense, coffee, cloves, lots of things. This is spicy leather with a kind of temple vibe, a little bit, a special kind of temple. It's called Nanban by Arkeist, if I didn't say the name. And uh, I always just joke that rhymes with Gangnam or the other bad word, Nanban. If you enjoy a burnt sandalwood feel, just imagine that in your head, um, then this could be something for you. It really does change depending on the weather, time and place. It's a complex fragrance. I love Arkeist, love Nanban, also described as masculine, but lo and behold. Okay, I don't even know if I can get through all of these. There are so many. Let's do them quickly. Uh, this next one is called Murmur Chypre. So a leather fragrance is uh, categorically put under Chypre. They used to have lots of oak moss in them. They used to kind of, you know, follow that construction. I feel like they've wandered and changed now as time has gone by. But this is called Murmur Chypre because it is a Chypre. And this is a deep, dark leather. It's a deep, dark leather, but still elegant. The same way the Bandit still has elegance, even though it's pistol sharp. This is lived in. It feels kind of animalic. It feels like dark and like gritty. It, oh, this, this is so punchy. I think this is the punchiest leather that I have in its own right, because these other ones, they still feel like sprayers. They still feel... Uh, wearable in that sense where this feels thick and almost oily like 
oh, it's also an Ixlay de Parfum. Like, it has colored the inside of the plastic. But that plastic is stained, man, uh, because this this leather is just so potent. It's it's like a, a shot, you know? If you were to take a shot of leather in a shot glass, that would be Murmur Chypre. And it's supposed to be a Chypre whisper, so that's what the name um, says. But... Uh, yeah, I guess because you kind of hint at it being a sheepla construction, but it's very much that dark leather. Oh, so good. And with having Miu Miu Chypre, I actually do not need the next fragrance, which I'm just showing you the bottle because I don't have it. It's from Tower Perfumes. This is another one from Tower. You guys know it. You've seen it a million times because it's my favorite. But this is Lone Star Memories. Lone Star Memories is in the similar vein to Miu Miu Chypre. If you would like to support a brand that is US based, then try this because the Tower fragrances are based in Switzerland. They're very hard to come across and, and get. Um, and you're definitely getting potency with these ones by, what was the brand the name? Oh, Motif Olfactif, I think it was the name. So Lone Star Memories was one of the leathers for me. It changed my perspective on leather. I think that before trying Lone Star Memories, I was like, eh, I didn't really understand, didn't really get the leather thing. Tried Lone Star Memories and it struck something, like a match lights up. It struck something in my head, bringing me to a campfire and I'm a cowboy and my uh, horse is there, you know, on the side. And it smells like saddle, yet it smells like campfire as well, yet it smells like, well, not so much campfire, but it smells uh, kind of oily. It smells like birch tarry as well, like, you know, really like greasy leather, but so picturesque, like really brings you to under the stars, you're a cowboy, you're at a campfire, your horse is there, you're wearing leather, your hat's made of leather, your whole outfit's leather, the horse is leather, <laughs> right? Like live leather. And... Oh, so beautiful. It's a must try. A must try. Tower Perfumes, Lone Star Memories. So again, I don't think we're going to be able to get through all my leathers, but uh, I'm going to talk to you another about another elegant leather, which uh, follows that, well, I don't know. I was about to say that quintessential masculine vibe, but that's up to your interpretation. Wow, it is so elegant. This is leathery and ambery. It is called Queer Garamont by MDCI. This is leathery with incense, with sandalwood, with roses listed in the notes, but yeah, okay. Yeah, there is rose there, but oh, it's so elegantly done. The sillage of this fragrance is just so elegant. Wow. Oh, and it's an all day scent as well. I think actually I would love this. I would love to smell this uh, on one of you guys. <laughs> Hopefully I run into one of you guys in real life and you're wearing something like this, like so elegant in the daytime. It just smells, ooh, it smells so high. And I have a few from this line and they're great. MDCI must be tried if you like, if you love a classic, but you want to try a brand that isn't necessarily a classic brand, but they really are trying to become evergreens with their collection. Each one of them are memorable. Um, well, <laughs> exaggeration maybe, but their all-stars are really memorable. And this one is one of their all-stars, Cuiv Garamont. Okay, now I'm going to go into a little bit of a lighter leather because we've been punchy and we've been uh masculine and we've been all of those things so now let's go a little bit softer again and talk about iris prima i think maybe it's italian iris prima like the prima of a ballet right for the prima ballerina and uh this is supposed to smell like ballet slippers it is so elegant it's just the little pitter patter of the ballet toes on the stage and it has this is actually suede itself which is so cool oh i love the classic penhaligans and this is leather with iris that does not mean that a man couldn't wear it absolutely not leather with iris for those of you who want a softer suede approach these are your gals these are your people sorry for saying gals again anyone can wear it these are your people the soft, sweaty approach 
Woo, and iris is just so soft. Like, I love wearing iris when I travel. If I'm going on a plane, those are one of those places you have to be very careful about how much you spray, what you wear. There are people who have allergies and all that. If I'm on a plane and I want to just smell clean and like subtle, like, oh, don't mind me, <laughs> you know? I just smell naturally this good. I'll wear an iris. Can't go wrong. Woo, <laughs> I mean, how are we gonna get through this? Okay, 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 okay. We're gonna do a couple more, a few more. And uh, we're gonna do Mon Numero 10 by L'Artisan Parfumeur. I have to mention L'Artisan. I think they have some other leathers in their collection now. But this one, oh, it's buttery. This smells like if leather were butter to me. I'm getting so excited talking about this topic. Can you tell how much I love leather? <laughs> Mon Numero 10, another pivotal fragrance for me to try in my lifetime. I was interning in New York City. I went to, where was it, Bergdorf's. Walked right down, was like, show me what you got. Show me the best that you've got. You know, a perfume nerd. <laughs> also in college, putting my pennies together for each and every bottle that I bought. And I tried Mon Numero 10 and I fell in love. It was like swoon. This is mainly a supple leather with the warmth of Tonka. And it's kind of ambery and it's got a little bit L'Artisan Parfumeur like characteristic background incense as well. I just love when a fragrance line has its signature. As you can see, this is the older version, so an older bottle, which I say time and time again are the better L'Artisan Parfumeurs. Whoa, is there toilet paper in this? What? How did that happen? Mon numero 10, supple, sweet leather. It could even be hinted as a gourmand leather. It could even be hinted as that. Um, I'm not gonna go that far though. Maybe an almost gourmand leather. So good, ah, so rich. So I recently did a video on Les Indemodables and Cuir de Chine was one of the fragrances that I spoke about. I ended up getting another Les Indemodables, folks, but this one was high on the ranking list and I'm wearing it today. This is rubbery leather. This is leather with some residue on it and really, really rubbery in the most gorgeous, realistic way. I love leather to be realistic, I really do. If you're going to give me a leather accord, if it does not actually smell like leather, I don't want you. Um, which is why a lot of leathers out there have been excluded from this list. So, B683, I also spoke about it recently. This is such a unique take on leather. It is so, it is spicy, like actual picante. Like it is uh, peppers. It is peppers <laughs> with your leather and minerally and clean at the same time. And... Just so good. This is not a straightforward leather, but I'm throwing it in here because it just is so freaking elegant. So check out my last review uh, comparing B683 and Ganymed. They're both leathers, but you know, not straightforward leathers. They are so much more. And then lastly, I'm gonna end it here. We have 1740 by Histoire de Parfum. We're gonna go dark now. We're going da down deep into the dungeon. This is leather with Immortel and patchouli and uh, spices, but it really is just, this is vampiric leather. This is leather mm, that's dark, woody, and just, uh, this is not your elegant, this is more your goth leather. Let's say that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video today about some of my favorite leather fragrances. I could talk about this topic for like two hours on end, three hours, all day. And I hope that you really enjoyed this video. I've put a lot of heart and love into it and I love sharing this. Oh, I just got emotional there. I love sharing this hobby with you guys. Thank you for your support. Bye.